Hi everyone, hope you're all very well and staying safe. Bernard here with the latest citizen vlog and it's um, a city pass today so we're doing a, doing a moments in time, not the greatest moments in time for cities, you know I do these little city past and presents. It's not always good things for city, I don't, I don't always, you know, history's history isn't it? There's always uh, plenty of, plenty of sort of uh, sad days in city's history as well as happy days which we've obviously we've enjoyed a lot of them a lot of them uh, quite recently haven't we but uh, so I do so want to look at these days so look at something that's sort of made made a difference or something unusual or something strange so we're going to look at back at 7th of November 1990 this week so please if you're new to this little channel push that bell notification push the uh, subscription button first and then push the bell notification so you know these little city vlogs are coming out past and present obviously i do do vlogs on city current as well and what's happening with city matches and where we're doing and how we're doing and this is obviously part of this is a citizen pass so this moment's in time 7th of november 1990 and it was notable or oh, yeah notable in fact for howard kendall Returning to his true love. Unfortunately, it wasn't Manchester City, was it? We were his bit on the side, unfortunately. Uh, obviously, Kendall did say after less than 12 months in charge at Main Road, uh, Manchester City was just an affair, but Everton was his marriage. There you go. So they always go back to the wives, not necessarily, but uh, obviously in this position, Mr Howard Kendall did. So we're going to have a look back at that, a little bit in the background, etc. to that today. He joined, obviously, Howard Kendall joined City in December 1989, so less than, less than 12 months before. And he certainly made City a, a more solider proposition as a team. And it sort of turned them into a mini Everton, haven't they? He'd obviously gone back to Everton for certain players. But we believed his vision, didn't we? We believed his, uh, his vision for City. So, so a lot of the City fans are quite happy with that. And if you, if you do regularly watch these moments in time, obviously the previous one to this one was uh, significant in that it was the... Uh, it was a couple of games before this actually happened. So this is like a continuation, really. Something I don't normally do as such now in these moments in time. But I just thought this was very important to carry on carry on regardless. Yeah, so he did leave us in a little bit of a lurch, didn't he, after transforming the squad in that period. Uh, how was City doing this season? Obviously, the season was quite young. It wasn't. We, hadn't, we weren't very far into it. We were already out of the League Cup, but we've been beaten by Arsenal, which was no bad thing. Arsenal was sat second in the league at the at the time, and uh, we lost in the, I think it was called the Rumble Owls Cup then, the League Cup in that in that year. So we'd actually lost to Arsenal, but we did did sit fifth, which we became quite a unique position for us for two or three seasons, didn't it? At that time, uh, fifth or fifth or sixth, and we did sit sit fifth, uh, but we were actually thirteen points. Behind a dominant Liverpool at the top, we had Liverpool at the top and Arsenal second, but Liverpool were sort of dominated at that point in time and they were quite comfortable on top. We'd had two draws in the league. The aforementioned moments in time was the 3-3 with, with United at main row, which I'd covered in the in last moments in time. You want to go back and watch that, watch the, look at the playlist. Uh, but we'd actually... We we should have won that, by the way, the three three. I mean, it was a draw, but you know, Mr. Kendall was fond of his draws, wasn't he? We'd actually um, we should have won that main road derby, but more of that. If you just seek out the last moments in time for that one. But we had five away draws on the trot in the league, which obviously kept us up there. So we were managing to win most of our home games, and we'd had five away draws on the trot. And we'd recently travelled to Roker Park. This was the weekend before this announcement was made. Uh, and drew drew one one with uh, Sunderland at Roker Park with uh, David White scoring the City goal. Uh, Everton had in fact at that stage had already sacked Colin Harvey, the manager. They sacked Colin Harvey before that that football weekend on the thirty first of October nineteen ninety because they've been they've been struggling. Uh, it was early days, you know what was, was the teams are like and directors are like boards are the boards of these clubs are like. They don't like to start off badly, so they get rid of people that they're not quite happy with. Perhaps they've got someone in mind when they do get rid of them sometimes. Uh, not, not every club does that. Some clubs obviously just, just do it and then plunge in and see what happens. But I'm sure Everton had something on the mind, didn't they? Uh, they were struggling four from bottom with 10 points from 11 games. But uh, there have been no hint to us as fans anyway that uh, after the sacking of Colin Harvey that... Um, a certain Mr Kendall will go, we may have thought it in the back of our minds, but obviously Kendall committed to us, hasn't he? So, 
obviously there was no hint of what was going to happen after these 3rd of November games at the weekend. Uh, man, manager Ever Everton had actually uh, were, found, were linked with Joe Royal. Um, more on him in a moment, but they were linked with Joe Royal to take charge and they'd actually won that game where they had a caretaker manager. Uh, three nil at Goodison in front of twenty two thousand fans. So that uh, that came after the sacking. Obviously, they won, they won the second game currently of the season. And some of the scores on that. I put some little image there of some of the scores on the day of that that same day as well. Uh, despite that Everton victory, uh, Matt DRC writing for the Express new newspapers described the behind the scenes events that sort of followed that weekend and the Everton victory and obviously the city trip to Sunderland but obviously behind the scenes things things were moving along weren't they obviously that we we weren't aware of at the time and uh, yeah so I'll just have a read from Matt Darcy's article in Express newspapers uh, back and blue it was headed Goodison suit for one million pound Kendall Howard Kendall was named Everton manager last night and one of the most sensational homecoming suckers ever seen Colin Harvey sacked last Wednesday returned as coach as the Merseysiders recreated their most successful management team ever. Yeah, they'd done pretty well before in the mid-80s, hadn't they? Mid to late 80s. Everton will have to pay more than £1 million for Kendall. His three-and-a-half-year contract at Goodison is worth about 200000 a year, and it will cost 350000 to pay up his contract with Manchester City. Everton will regard this as peanuts if Kendall repeats his triumphs from 84 to 87, when he led them to two league titles, the FA and European Cup Winners' Cup. And they managed to get him against City's wishes simply because Kendall said he wanted to go. Everton, who never considered Oldham's Joe Royal, contacted, so despite everyone saying they would, contacted City chairman Peter Swales on Monday to ask for permission to offer Kendall the job. Swales refused, but as a courtesy informed Kendall of the approach. Uh, I think he sort of informed him in a, just in passing. I don't, I don't think we went out of his way to tell him. Kendall, 13 years at Everton as player and manager, had a clause in his contract allowing him to move. Said a dejected Swales. We've been trying to talk him out of it, but he's determined to go. Swales put Peter Reid in temporary charge at Main Road. Everton chairman Philip Carter said Kendall was their first and only choice. Kendall was introduced to Everton fans at half-time during a reserve match at Goodison minutes after his appointment. Ironically, here we go, one of, one of football's strange things. This. The opponents on that night for the reserve team were Manchester City, who, who ran out 2-0 winners. That's typical. Typical City, isn't it? When you talk about a love affair with Manchester City, you're talking about a marriage with Everton, declared Kendall. That's where the quote comes from. I know I said before the Manchester derby, I didn't want to manage any other club, but this is not any other club. This is special. So they are Matt Darcy found sort of helped us out with that. Uh, so obviously Swales was left uh, searching for his 11th manager during his tenure at charge at Main Road. Meantime, as it stated there, Peter Reid will take temporary charge. Us, the fans, yeah, of course they weren't happy. I mean, uh, you go on to what was said about Mr Kendall in a moment. But, uh, yeah, in the evening news, Colin Evans was writing for the evening news and uh, under the heading, pathetic sham of loyalty, some views from City fans. Shocked Manchester City fans blasted Howard Kendall's decision to quit main role today. Frank Horrocks, secretary of the supporter club, fumed. The managers talk about loyalty and dedication. You must be joking. It's all about the money. We all know that. In fact, the only loyal points in this game are the ones... Only loyal people, sorry, in this game are the ones who go through the turnstiles paying their money week after week. We feel badly let down by this. The City fans back Howard Kendall this season, first with an increase in ticket sales and then by getting behind the players. This is the way we are repaid. But I promise you this, the fans will be there again on Sunday to support Manchester City. Stuart Trey led the chant of Terry's condemnation for Kendall, saying the speed and cynicism of his departure leaves a very bitter taste in the mouth. The, motion, the notion of loyalty and team spirit which he tries to imbue into Manchester City has been shown up as pathetic sham it probably always was. Far from being remembered as City's saviour, Mr Kendall will be thought of as a smooth-tongued manipulator. Disgraceful, David Wynne of Sale said simply, Howard Kendall has sold us down the river. Radcliffe's Tony T slashed, it is disgraceful that he can just walk out like this. Not long ago, Mr Kendall was claiming that his heart was with City. Now it's suddenly with Everton. 
but Tees also fired a shot at City Supremo Peter, Supremo Peter Swales. I think it's pathetic that the chairman should allow a manager to get away so easily. Salford teenager Alex Mills has said he had no right to sell players like Ian Bishop, who the fans loved, and then go back to Everton. Only the other day he was plugging his loyalty to City, and I think this will have a bad effect on us all in the league. Here we go again, grown K Morley of Stockport. Another manager moves in, brings in all his own men, and then leaves on a whim. We now have three options. Advertise approach, advertise, approach Joe Royal, Bobby Robson or John Toshak. Or put Tony Buck back in charge with Peter Reid as his player coach. So, as you can see for there, the, the fans were not very happy at all with it. We were, and quite rightly. <laughs> I mean, obviously, um, myself and uh, obviously my lad was uh, quite young at the, at the time. So he probably didn't have the same sort of uh, feeling. But I certainly wasn't very happy about it either. Uh, Swales, Swales, all right, we've no love for Swales, have we? But he uh, reported in the press, he said it broke his heart. And just to confirm that, I just, just an article from Mr. Ken Lawrence. Kendall's broken my heart. I thought he'd stay, says Peter Swales. This is Mr. Ken, Ken Lawrence, the journalist Ken, Ken Lawrence writing. Manchester City chairman Peter Swales last night revealed what Howard Kendall broke his heart when he walked out and he was powerless preventing going. Kendall, in charge at Main Road only since last December, had a get-out clause written into the contract which still had two years to run. He invoked that clause at a cost of almost 350000 in compensation to Everton to return to the club with which he won two, two titles, the FA Cup and the Cup Winners' Cup. And as Main Road Supremo tries to pick up the pieces after one of the most sensational managerial switches ever, he told at the moment he knew he'd lost his man. Swales in charge of City for 17 years admitted, After all this time it takes me a lot to, be, to devastate me, but I am shattered. This is the biggest disappointment known in soccer, especially as I thought Howard would be here for life. Yet Swales could do nothing but step aside at 4pm yesterday and watch the man he appointed only 11 months ago walk out the door. Explained the city chairman, Howard had a clause in his contract which had allowed him to become the England manager if he was ever offered the job. But he also had another clause, the same as he had with Everton and Blackburn Rovers. And that was that if he wanted to leave, if a third party were prepared to pay the compensation, then he could go. So he used that and I could not stop him. Swales indeed laughed off the approach for permission to speak to Kendall from Goodison chairman Phil Carter at 9pm on Monday night. The city chairman, like almost everybody in the game apart from a chosen few at Everton, had expected Oldham's Joe Royal to be named as successor to Colin Harvey. But while Royal's availability was sounded out, as was that of Sheffield Wednesday's Ron Atkinson and Steve Coppel of Crystal Palace. Well, he wouldn't have stayed long, would he? Uh, it was really Kendall who was the secret target. Even though Kendall left Goodison over a wages dispute, once Harvey had failed, Chairman Carter decided he would try to re-employ the man who last season saved City from relegation and gave Everton their biggest success for almost two decade, decades. Yet Swales admitted, when I came to work this morning, I was perfectly relaxed, worried about nothing. I But this is where he sort of, sort of mentioned it to Howard in passing. I bumped into Howard at the time and said, hey, your old club have been inquiring about you. I only realised something was up when he said, well, actually, there is something to I want to discuss with you. And it transpired he wanted to go. So obviously the approach, uh, obviously from that, taken from that thing, the approach to Kendall, obviously through the club, obviously Kendall had heard from Everton as well. So there, go, there goes that side of the not approaching things um, without uh, without telling people, but there you go, that's another thing, isn't it? Yeah, on Merseyside, well, the blue half of Merseyside, anyway, there was a lot of joy. Kendall, Kendall was back in his blue heaven. They should have said dark blue heaven, shouldn't he, really? Ironically, this, the sack manager, Harvey, was named as his number two, and it has, was hinted that he had seemingly wanted to take Peter Reid with him as well, but uh, Reid stayed loyal to City, thankfully. Uh, perhaps Peter Reid knew something as well. So City were left deflated and faced a television game on the following Sunday, the 11th of November, versus Leeds United. Not to say we didn't feature on telly much in those days, so it was uh, quite a big game. So we had to face that game with uh, Mr. Reed in temporary charge. And he, he was favourite. He was certainly favourite uh, amongst the fans uh, to, to take over as such. Um, uh, there, was, there was the players as well were all all behind Peter Reid. There was articles appearing for the players behind P Peter Reid to become the manager, but the, I think some of the board fancied uh, fancied Joe Royal, who thought we thought would go to Everton. So I thought obviously that opened up the idea of perhaps Royal coming, but uh, perhaps they, they all thought he was going to Everton, but it was never really on the cards according to Everton sources. 
Uh, as we know, in the end, Reed Reed was chosen. He he played the Leeds game, which we lost, unfortunately, on TV. But uh, that didn't deter anybody. He still uh, still ended up as the city manager, and uh, Mr. Swells took a chance. I think most fans at the time were ha- were happy with that. It's hard to forget how Kendall had let us down, and because uh, us the fans had invested in his vision for the club. You know, it it said as a, as any manager would, he'd cl- come out with great plaudits of what he could do and what City could do. Obviously, uh, Judas, uh, which I've used as a title to this in my when I've I put this on on YouTube and Twitter, was it was you know an unkind word, but it was a phrase used and sung by City fans about Kendall, even. My, uh, Myself, I, I would have used the word about him. I would. I was very disgruntled and very unhappy at the time. And he even went on to beat us when we played him in the league. We'd already beat him at Main Road early in the season, uh, fortunately. But uh, when we went to Goodison Park in January of the same season, they actually managed to beat us 2-0 to add, to add a little bit of insult to our injury. So Mr Kendall got one over from, on us. But looking away from that, um, he did manage to keep Everton clear relegation. As I said, they were near the fourth, fourth or fifth from the bottom when he took over. But um, he managed for them to finish ninth. But we finished, we finished a, a comfortable fifth. We stayed in fifth. And we, we finished fifth that season. The season after, we finished fifth again. Everton finished twelfth. The season after that, 92-93, City finished, well, ninth wasn't great. Everton, 13th. So there you go, Mr Kendall. He couldn't bring back the previous glories, unfortunately. Or better City as far as league results and league positions concerned in the time he was back at Everton. And he actually resigned in December 1993. So that was a wee bit of revenge for us City fans, wasn't it? A wee bit, wee bit of revenge for City. But you sort of cannot, cannot really wonder what may have happened with City, if he'd stayed, what we could have, what we could have done, perhaps, if if he had stayed. It's often said, isn't it, in life and work, um, you should never go back. Perhaps he should have remembered this old adage when, when he decided to return to his marriage and ended his affair with Manchester City. Howard Kendall sadly passed away, aged sixty-nine, in October twenty fifteen. I mean, obviously, our condolences to his family and friends even now, and obviously. At the end of the day, he was part of our history. He was our manager for a certain length of time, longer than some managers we've had. So, as I say, he still goes down in our city history as a city manager. But what could have been and what was, that's it. But anyway, thanks for joining me for this little City Moments in Time. 7th of November 1990, the day Howard Kendall officially joined Everton and left Manchester City who then started to search for their 11th manager of the Swales reign. And it wasn't, it wasn't going to end there, was it? But there you go. You know, you and me know there's, there was more troubles on the way. Please, hope you enjoyed that. Please let me know in the comments if you have any specific memories of uh, Mr Kendall, Swales, Everton, anything like that. We're sort of OK with Everton now, aren't we? Our, our mutual dislike of, the, of Everton's neighbours sort of make us... Quite friendly, but it wasn't always always so with City and Everton fans. It certainly wasn't uh, in the 70s and 80s and even the 90s. You can see it's it's only a recent thing that City and Everton have sort of become more friendlier with each other off the pitch. Anyway, uh, please. So that was interesting. So any any comments, you meant, please, please uh, let me know. Anyway, if, uh, you can check out my little links now that are up on screen. Obviously, you can follow me on Twitter or friend me on Facebook. And I, I do check every couple of days and follow and friend everyone back. So I do put stuff on there as well that obviously aren't included in these vlogs for your information. And obviously, I post stuff when vlogs are coming out, etc. So that will be fantastic. If you can look at my little day job, my little day job, moviegamenostalgia.com for old rare DVDs, movie posters from the 90s and 2000s and board games are on there as well. If you can check that link, absolutely fantastic. Anyway, thanks for joining me for this. If you're still with me watching this, please, thumbs up's are great. If you can leave us a thumbs up, that's fantastic. It's nice to get views, but it's nice to get thumbs up as well. If you can do that, that'd be absolutely superb for me. Anyway, until we meet again, please, all I can ask for you all to do is stay safe, Blues. Whatever you're going to do the rest of have a great one. Look after yourselves, look after your friends, look after your family. More importantly, let's all look after each other. And hopefully you'll join me again for another Citizen Past, Present or Moments in Time very, very soon. Bernard saying thanks for watching. Bye-bye.